a core for Sega's 32X has appeared out of nowhere. SRG320, who's also developing the Saturn core, has just released a 32X core for Mr. So you can update and try it out for yourself. It kind of makes sense that he would work on the 32X core since it shares the same processor as the Sega Saturn, but it's still no easy feat. Overall, it seems that games play well on this core, except for sample playback on some games playing too fast and sounding like chipmunks. Can you really take Admiral Akbar seriously with this voice? Anyway, in this video, I'm going to use a 32X core to play through some games that show off what the 32X can do. They are not necessarily going to be all good games, but given that the 32X didn't get much support, these games can give you an idea just what else could be possible had the add-on had more support from Sega and third-party developers. Sadly, it came out too close to the release of the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation, so gamers and developer had more powerful hardware to look forward to. The first game I'm going to show you is Knuckles Chaotix. While to me, the game is nowhere near as entertaining as the mainline Sonic games, it does show off how much better color-wise the 32X can be over a stock Sega Genesis. The main thing that this game has against it is that it plays completely different from other Sonic games, and the new controls will take a while to get used to. I'm sure the developers were aware of the learning curve, which is why they included a tutorial at the beginning of the game. Calibri is a game that really shows off the color palette capabilities of the 32X. This game is a side-scrolling shooter with puzzle elements where you control a hummingbird that's out to save the earth. It's a really beautiful game and the visuals impressed reviewers at the time of release. You know what time it is. Yo, homie. Peep there. Tempo. Check it out. You know he makes it funky. And he's good to go. Tempo was the first side-scrolling platform game on the 32X. It featured large, well-animated cartoony sprites, detailed backgrounds, and high-quality sound samples. The stages are presented as performances on a musical variety show where you are competing for a trophy. It doesn't play much differently from other platformers, so you will be able to pick it up really quickly. You can defeat enemies by either kicking them or jumping on them. The 32X was also capable of producing 3D graphics. Not as good as what you will see on the PlayStation or Saturn, but much better than the Super FX and Sega's SVP chip. Here we have T-Mech, a port of an Atari arcade game. It's really a pseudo 3D game, and it's pretty much a Battlezone clone with some cool scaling effects. In the game, you pretty much play deathmatch against computer opponents to get the most kills in order to advance. There is also a split screen mode where you and a second player can battle each other. Next we have the more impressive looking Metalhead. It has fully 3D rendered and texture map environments and enemies, but the frame rate does take a hit. This is a mech game where the goal mostly involves you destroying every enemy in a level. While the game can be much better, it makes you think what could have been possible on the 32X had developers had more time to get familiar with it. Shadow Squadron feels like a more fleshed out Star Wars arcade game, which I will talk about later in this video. Upon booting up the game, you are greeted to a cool real-time 3D cinematic. I assume Sega was also gunning for Star Fox with this game. It controls similar to Star Wars Arcade but you have more freedom on where you move around to. There is an option to have the game fly for you and you just concentrate on shooting, making the game behave more like an on-rail shooter. One of the cool things to do in this game is that you are able to destroy entire warships. A 
If you are waiting for some Sega Super Scalar arcade games to be released on Mister, the 32X Core can help scratch that itch with some excellent ports. Space Harrier on the 32X brought the best home console port of the game at the time it was released. It does suffer from some slowdown, but that didn't stop it from playing and looking great. This game also shows off just how colorful and vibrant a 32X game can be. Another excellent super scalar port on the 32X is Afterburner Complete. When you start playing the game, you feel just like you're playing the arcade game. The 32X does a good job of replicating the arcade scaling effects. Ports like these make me wish Sega had ported more of their super scalar arcade games. I would have loved to see a port of Galaxy Force 2, Outrunners and more. The 32X was home to some impressive Model 1 ports. Here's Sega's Virtua Fighter. While it is definitely a graphical downgrade, the game does keep what makes Virtua Fighter Virtua Fighter, and that is its tight gameplay. The gameplay is smooth and feels just right. This port is even considered better than Sega's initial port on the Sega Saturn. Another Model 1 port to the 32X is Virtua Racing, and again, it's a great port of an arcade game. This one improves on the Sega Genesis SVP version with upgraded visuals and more content than the arcade version. Like with the Virtua Fighter port, you do get downgraded graphics from the arcade version, but it still captures the essence of Virtua Racing while giving you more content to increase its replay value. And we have another good Sega Model 1 arcade port. Star Wars Arcade is based on the original Star Wars trilogy, where you pilot a rebel starship to fight against the Empire. The 32X adds additional levels from the arcades 3, covering different scenes from the Star Wars movies. It was really awesome to see this game running on the 32X back then, only a year after the arcade game's release. Currently the sound is not working well on the court because samples play too fast. Doom was all the rage back then for PC. It popularized network deathmatch gaming and offered graphics never seen before. On the 32X, to keep the game running smoothly, the screen area is reduced but not enough to make everything look small. It's not an exact port of the PC version and the music sounds pretty bad, but it does keep the gameplay intact making this a good port. So that's a 32X core. Besides the audio issues, games are working and running really well. And this is another great addition to the Mr. FPGA project. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.